June 25th, 2009. Staples Center, Los Angeles, just after midnight. Michael Jackson finishes up a long rehearsal for his This Is It comeback shows, which kick off in less than three weeks. This is the final curtain call. Michael then returns to his rented mansion in the Holmby Hill section of LA. At about 1.30 a.m., he goes to bed. We have a, a, a gentleman here that needs help and he's not breathing yet. He's not breathing and we need to, we're trying to pump him, but he's not. Okay, how old is he? He's uh, 50 years old, sir. 50, he's unconscious, he's not breathing. We got the call at 1221. There was no identification by the caller of who he was or who was having the medical issues, but we knew that someone was in dire, dire straits. Did anybody see him? Yes, we have a personal doctor here with him, sir. Oh, you have a doctor there? Yes, but he's not responding to the CPR or anything. All right, do you have him? Is he on the floor? Where's he at right now? He's on the bed, sir. He's on the bed. Okay, let's get him on the floor. Okay, let's get him on the floor. CPR should be conducted on hard, firm surfaces, but there was a physician in the room that was doing CPR on the bed. A hard surface is critical for proper CPR so the patient's heart can be compressed effectively between the breastbone and the spinal column. When Michael's given CPR in his bed, he's simply being pushed down into the mattress. The compressions can't squeeze his heart enough to pump blood to the brain and other organs. The biomechanics of CPR... June 25th, 2009, Staples Center, Los Angeles, just after midnight. Michael Jackson finishes up a long rehearsal for his This Is It comeback shows, which kick off in less than three weeks. This is the final curtain call. Michael then returns to his rented mansion in the Holmby Hills section of LA. At about 1.30 a.m., he goes to bed. We have a, a, a gentleman here that needs help and he's not breathing yet. He's not breathing and we need to, we're trying to pump him, but he's not. Okay, how old is he? He's uh, 50 years old, sir. 50, he's unconscious, he's not breathing. We got the call at 1221. There was no identification by the caller of who he was or who was having the medical issues, but we knew that someone was in dire, dire straits. Did anybody see him? Yes, we have a personal doctor here with him, sir. Oh, you have a doctor there? Yes, but he's not responding to the CPR or anything. All right, do you have him? Is he on the floor? Where's he at right now? He's on the bed, sir. He's on the bed. Okay, let's get him on the floor. Okay, let's get him on the floor. CPR should be conducted on hard, firm surfaces, but there was a physician in the room that was doing CPR on the bed. A hard surface is critical for proper CPR so the patient's heart can be compressed effectively between the breastbone and the spinal column. When Michael's given CPR in his bed, he's simply being pushed down into the mattress. The compressions can't squeeze his heart enough to pump blood to the brain and other organs. The biomechanics of CPR are very straightforward. How or why a physician might not know that I can't comment on. LAFD Rescue Ambulance 71 arrives at 100 North Carrollwood Drive. And at 12.25, we were on scene. The firefighters were let in and then led to the room where the patient was located. Our firefighters found the doctor doing CPR. It turned out to be Michael Jackson. Doc, no, what do we have? Patient's on These are experienced emergency providers. I think it became very apparent to our personnel that this individual was down probably for quite some time. Paramedics perform CPR and other life-saving measures in hopes of a miracle. The MTs on scene do uninterrupted chest compressions with supplemental oxygen. They administer drugs like adrenaline. They insert endotracheal tube with 100% oxygen to provide rescue breathing. But unfortunately, a pulse is never restored. It's clear that Michael Jackson is dead. The reality is, after 20 minutes on scene with both basic and life support interventions ongoing and failure to return a pulse, it's pretty much a foregone conclusion that resuscitation is going to be unsuccessful. Although paramedics in this situation might normally pronounce a patient dead at the scene, Michael's personal physician insists on further treatment. The doctor said, take him to the hospital. What apparently he was doing was saying, he didn't die on my watch. Uh, by getting him to the hospital, let somebody else pronounce him dead. Meanwhile, the scene outside Michael's mansion begins to attract attention. 
onlookers realize something is amiss. When I arrived about 12.40, the ambulance was inside the gates. There was a fire truck that was parked out on the street. I was doing video and I could see the call screen and it said 50-year-old male not breathing. At a certain point, I could see the paramedics exiting the house with a stretcher. I moved closer to the gate. It was a difficult shot to get, but I could see that it was Michael. I was driving uh, my tour. All of a sudden, I heard a reverse signal. I could see the paparazzi running towards the ambulance, and it was chaos. Right or left, right or left! Paramedics continued to work on Michael as they transport him to Ronald Reagan UCLA Medical Center. With the paparazzi now trailing them, paramedics first turn west on a winding one-mile stretch of sunset, then Hillgard, Macant, and two more quick turns to reach the ER loading zone. The 2.7-mile trip takes eight minutes. ER doctors work furiously to revive Michael. Though it seems hopeless, they refuse to give up on the megastar. Clear. But nothing works. Simultaneously, at about 1.30 p.m., the world gets word that Michael Jackson has suffered cardiac arrest and is in critical condition. Very few realize he is already gone. The first report that came in was from TMZ and it said that Michael Jackson has suffered a cardiac arrest. Everyone was in shock. Michael Jackson suffered cardiac arrest and is now in a coma, literally struggling for his life. I got a phone call from Randy Jackson telling me that they had taken his brother Michael to the hospital and he just says, Brian, it's bad. Meet me there. Family members were arriving, so you had all this grief and anguish unfolding, and within 30 minutes, hundreds of fans started to show up at that hospital, and we were all waiting on word. Both the Los Angeles Times and CBS News are both now reporting that Michael Jackson has died. My brother, the legendary king of pop, Michael Jackson, passed away on Thursday, June 25th, 2009 at 2.26 p.m. It is believed he suffered cardiac arrest in his home. I was wanting to see him in concert. It's not clear that he's gone. Shortly before 4 p.m., detectives Orlando Martinez and Scott Smith from the LAPD's Robbery and Homicide Division arrive at UCLA to investigate the death of Michael Jackson. They learned from paramedics that Michael's private physician, Dr. Conrad Murray, had given him the sedative Ativan that morning and was the last person to see the King of Pop alive. What investigators need to find out is, who is this guy? Where did he come from? Why was he inside this house? But when it comes to getting Dr. Murray's full statement, he's nowhere to be found. The police and law enforcement at the hospital just said that Dr. Murray disappeared. They looked for him and they couldn't find him. Unable to locate Murray, Detectives head for the crime scene, Michael's rented mansion. The police detectives were confronted with a scene that was somewhere between a bedroom and a hospital room. There was an IV stand with a drip. There were many oxygen tanks, and there was massive, massive amounts of prescription drugs. It was like a pharmacy. Almost immediately, investigators knew there was a drug connection here. At Michael's bedside are bottles of at least seven different tranquilizers and muscle relaxers, prescribed by Dr. Murray, Dr. Arnold Klein, and Dr. Alan Metzger. Some of the drugs are sedative hypnotics, often used to treat insomnia. The public record regarding Michael Jackson is there was a long history of drug use, if you will, and he stated that he had great difficulty sleeping and was using drugs to relax and to sleep. Detectives also find 11 unlabeled bottles of a milky white substance, later identified as propofol. They later confiscate the same drug from Dr. Murray's bag. Propofol restricted only to the operating rooms or the emergency department. The patient has to be on a cardiac monitor. They have to be on oxygen. One nurse's responsibility to do nothing else but monitor the patient's vital signs. This is something that you would never dream about giving anything outside the hospital setting. And it sure as hell should not be given as a sleep aid. Whereas sedative hypnotics gradually repress the central nervous system and brain to make a person fall asleep, propofol is a much more powerful and fast-acting anesthetic, attaching to brain receptors more rapidly and slowing down signals to the heart and lungs at a much more extreme rate. At about 6.30 p.m., Michael's body is transferred from the hospital to the L.A. coroner's office via helicopter as the world gets its last look at a music legend. I just said, this is surreal, and it hit me. He's really gone. 